<laughs> You're all set, Father. Okay, thank you. Well, welcome back to all of us to the study of Genesis. I hope you remember it's Genesis. <laughs> it's been so long. Hopefully we won't have such a hiatus again. Let's begin this uh, today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and then kindle in them the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they will be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant us in that same Holy Spirit to be made truly wise and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady Queen of Peace, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's get back to Genesis. We had, uh, as I recall, we had entered the second chapter of Genesis. We, we had uh, uh, completed the first and uh, started into the second. And as soon as I... My, my Bible is falling apart, but I've used it extensively since 1970, so the translation is old, but they've made some advances in linguistics and language since then, but nonetheless, it serves my purpose. As you recall, I said uh, last time that there are four traditions in the Old Testament, uh, and in, in the Torah, uh, there are four traditions, J, E, P, and D. Uh, and they're known uh, uh, as J, E, P, and D, J for Yahwist. Uh, let me get up. My cat who's begging attention here is gonna have to move. There you go ahead. Four traditions coming from four different areas, four different parts of, of uh, the Holy Land. And uh, so there, although there was, there was some trans, uh, translating, tran transposition of, of, of thought and so on from one to the other, they each had their individual character as well. And J, of course, is, is uh, Probably the predominant one, and it represents the Yahwist. And that's because God's name is, is in this tradition, Yahweh. Transliterates J-H-W-H. Uh, and you know Hebrew has no vowels. You know that there are, uh, the written language has no vowels. The, a group of uh, one of the tribes, the Masoretes, a later tribe, began to insert dots to represent vowel, vowel sounds. So, so you to this word Yahweh. Then you'd have to put a see. They'd, they'd have to put some to know what ah see ya. Yeah. Um, and eh, yeah, where, so, uh, so that, that that means that that's how that word is pronounced. There's never a question about it's pronounced because now it has vowel sounds um, uh, symbolized by a series of dots. This Yahwist account, God's name is 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 Yahweh, and that's that's his name in there. We we're using it, his name here now as a study, but the Holy Father has asked us not to not to pronounce the name because Jews are forbidden in the in the Torah for, forbidden to say God's name. They're not allowed to say, not, not allowed to call him by his name. The reason for that is interesting. When you name something, you claim you claim dominion over it in in in, in Hebrew thought. So uh, God, he he told Adam, name all the name everything. See why? Why did Adam give him? Because then he had dominion over them. See, 
It, you name it, you own it. It's a, the, the, this transliterates into, into some modern thinking with uh, uh, like uh, counselors and so on. Name your sins, see, <laughs> so that you can own them. Uh, it's anyway, <laughs> this is God's name in Hebrew. Now, you, you, so since you can't say it, so you see this in the written form, but you don't say it. You say Adonai. You see, but you see you, Yahweh, but you say Adonai. Adonai means Lord. So you, you say Adonai when you, when you see his name. So because it's an unpronounceable. You, you, it's like trying to own God if you say his name, which is a grievous sin, see, from the Hebrew. Okay, um, that's that's one tradition, the Yahwist, and it, it has certain characteristics. Um, let me see. The E tradition is E for L, and and Eloist, and in this the Eloist tradition, God's name is L. El Shaddai, El Elohim. It, it's, God, it's God of the uh, of the whatever. See, uh, God of God of all reality. El Omni. Okay, God's name is is El, and it's the Elohist tradition. Uh, Yahwist, the Elohist, the priestly tradition. Um, God, uh, God can be variously named in the pre uh, priestly, in the priestly tradition, but it's usually L. But it can, it can be various other names. The priestly tradition is more interested not in God's name. The priestly tradition is more interested in law. See, anytime you find law and cult, you must follow these cults. You must do this. You must do that. Um, uh, Ten Commandments, you see, <laughs> are cultic. They, they come, they come basically, basically, largely from the priestly tradition. J E P, and then finally the the last one is is um, I'm going to take this off the board so I can more more board space. D, Deuteronomic. Symbolized with a D. It's, there's not a lot of D in Genesis. <laughs> it's, you find a, a more D, more Deuteronomic uh, in the uh, other parts of the Torah and, and later. But um, it, it is it does enter in the, some of some of the Deuteronomic thinking enters in as well. So J E P and D, and uh, so we're mindful of that as we go through now in the first chapter of. Um, well, let me back up. I remember remember also that <laughs> that that the. Torah is an amalgamation of these. It's not just one. It's not 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 one or uh, one author writing all the way through. See, it's it's an amalgamation. There was a redactor. Uh, who, when, who? Well, we know about when, but not who. Uh, the redactor. He, who redacted? He redacted the texts. Put them together, put them together. So you have now you have two accounts of of of, of uh, the creation accounts. See, we we had uh, last time uh, because the redactor couldn't fit them together any better than he did. So, so um, where are we? 
The last time we, we, we looked at Genesis 1, which is in the priestly tradition, the P tradition. Okay. Now, today we're looking more thoroughly at, um, at uh, ch uh, whoop, chapter 2, which... Uh, Okay, which is, uh, okay, primarily the Yahwist tradition, the J tradition. So you have the priestly and the J in the first two, two chapters of Genesis. So going now to the second chapter of, um, let's begin at the second chapter because I just got a few verses in there and then we had to stop. Uh, <coughs> Okay, the second account of creation is at the time when Yahweh God made earth and heaven, there was as yet no wild bush on the earth, nor had any wild plant yet sprung up. For Yahweh God had not sent rain on the earth, nor was there any man to till the soil. You get a clue as to, as to how late this is. These are, these are agrarian people. <laughs> there was no man to till the soil. So it, it, it belies something about the age of it. It's, it's a, in terms of, of ancient history, it's, it's re relatively modern. Uh, <laughs> However, the uh, flood was rising from the earth and watering all the surfaces of the soil. You see, in this, in this um, uh, Yahweh's tradition, the, the flood comes from the, from the earth. It, it comes up, see? Now you're going to see in, in uh, <laughs> 40 days and 40 nights of rain, see, in another tradition. So here you have... Um, A flood was rising from the earth and watering all the surface of the soil. God fashioned man from the dust of the soil. Okay, from the dust of the soil. The, the, ah, I need, <laughs> you, do, do you have to? It's a Hebrew thing. And that's an A. Let's make it a little better. Adama. So we call him Adam, see. <laughs> Because he's, he's soil, and the, from dust you are, see? From Adama you are, so you are Adam. Uh, makes sense in Hebrew. <laughs> it doesn't make too much sense in English. <coughs> Greek isn't bad. Uh, God fashioned man of the dust of the soil. This is verse 7, 2-7. Then he breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and thus man became a living being. That's plain enough. That that uh, the, the anthropology was life came when God breathed uh, life into it. Yeah. And into the being. So Adam from Adama. And God caused to spring up from the soil every kind of thing is the, the, uh, uh, of tree enticing to look at and good to eat. With the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden. This knowledge of good and evil has, is, uh, doesn't mean 
uh, moral, knowing moral good and moral evil. Knowledge of good and evil is a, uh, comes actually not from the, well, it filters into, into Hebrew thought, but it comes from the Gilgamesh epics and um, Babylon and, and the neighbors uh, and, and Gilgamesh. The knowledge of good and evil um, is in in the uh, in the Babylonian epics is uh, a, a euphemism for sexual uh, activity, uh, something sexual uh, uh, intercourse or whatever. But but it, that that's what knowledge of good and evil is. It's a euphemism for from Babylon. Now they can't, they borrowed that. You see because they're all neighbors and the, well, I'll tell you my stories if you tell me your stories. You <laughs> see sitting around, sitting around the campfire in a Bedouin tent. These, that's how these things grew and how the language grew. <clears throat> uh, I stopped so often I, I forget where I was. Yes. Um, no, uh, it describes the the um, the garden. Um, well, knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden. So, in the middle of the garden is this tree. See that 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 gives knowledge of of good and uh, of uh, good and evil, which is to say, sexual maturity. <laughs> no, so a river flowed from Eden to water the garden. And from there, it divided into four streams. This is just um, filling in the, the information for the storytellers, the, uh, the, what the, the, the river's names and so on, Pishan and circles the whole land of Ahadla, where there is gold and so on. So it's being specific for the good storytelling uh, is, is specific. The, the, the third river is named the Tigris and, and thus flows to the east of Asher, the fourth is the Euphrates. I had a pair of cats once, I called them Tigris and Euphrates, <laughs> after these two rivers. <clears throat> then God uh, gave uh, the man this admonish admonition. Right. You may eat indeed of all the trees in the garden. Nevertheless, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you are not to eat. For on the day you eat it, you shall most surely die. In other words, he shall cease to be Adam, just Adam as he was created by God. But God, so, but he's tempted, you see. They're, they're tempted to, to uh, by this uh, att attractiveness of, of something sexual. And, and this is very, uh, <laughs> very early writing. God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helpmate. So from the soil, uh, God fashioned all the wild beasts and all the birds of heaven and, and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. See, see, he will have dominion over them, right? Right from the beginning. He's, he's going to name them. The name the man would give, give each. Uh, and so he gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of heaven. This is God giving, in Hebrew thought, this is God's giving man all this for him, see. And, and uh, because he gets to name them, he gets to own, own them. But no helpmate suitable was found for him. I usually stop at my classes at the university and say, so God made him a cat. <laughs> God made the man fall into a deep sleep. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and enclosed and brought it to the man. And the man exclaimed, this at last is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. This is to be called woman, for this was taken from man. It's called in Hebrew, ish, uh, ish, uh, ish. The man is ish and the woman is ish, ish. <laughs> so this at last is to be called ish, ish, for it was taken from ish. And this is why, and, and, and this is all etiology, see. Uh, this is why a man leaves father and mother and joins himself to his wife, and they become one body. 
Now both of them were naked, the man and the wife, but they felt no shame. See? Now, they felt no shame that they were, they didn't know they were naked. See? They had not yet been activated sexually. I suppose it's like growing immaturely into adolescence, I'm not sure. But it, that's what it, it, it's it's like that. See, they, they, they had no sexual knowledge and and um, or interest and so the um, uh, so the, the, this is fine for for them and to live as as partners in the in the uh, however chapter three the serpent was the most subtle of all the wild beasts that God had made it asked the woman did God really say you were to eat from any you were not to eat from any of the trees in the garden and the woman answered the serpent no 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 we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden but of the fruit in the tree in the middle of the garden we may not eat god said uh, god said you must not eat nor touch it under pain of death then the serpent said to the woman no you will not die god knows in fact that on the day you eat your eat it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God's knowing good and evil. See, you will be like God's, you will, you will create see, life, like God created life, see. You, you will be able to create life once this, once this ha happens. And the woman saw that the tree was good to eat and pleasing to the eye. It was desirable. And so she took some of it and ate it. Then uh, she gave some also to her husband, who was with her, uh, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open. And what did they realize? They realized they were naked. You see, it, it has this, this is the fruit of, uh, it's an aphrodisiac of some sort. It wakes up their sexual appetites. Realized that they were naked, so they, they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves loin cloths. The man, A, and his wife heard the sound of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. This is, uh, this is very uh, J. Uh, well, God uh, has, like a man, he's, uh, he's walking in the garden, see. And um, uh, among the trees of the garden, but uh, God uh, called to the man, where are you? He asked. I heard, well, I heard you See, in the garden, he replied. I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. Who told you you were naked? See? Have you been eating from the tree I forbade you to eat? See? The knowledge of good and evil. The man replied, it was the woman you put with me. <laughs> I always loved this in when I was teaching in <laughs> teaching army guys. <laughs> she gave she gave the fruit, and I ate it. And then God, God said to the woman, "What is this you have done?" The woman replied, "The serpent tempted me." <laughs> so, the, the, God, uh, Adam blames Eve, and, and Eve blames uh, the devil. Then Yahweh Garden said to the serpent, because you have done this, well, I said the devil could be, because you have done this. What follows here now are what called, are called etiologies, you know that word etiology? It's the study of origins. So what follows here are etiologies. This explains now why the, bell, why the um, snake crawls on its belly, see? And, and so, see, be a cur because you did this, he says to the, to the serpent, be accursed beyond all cattle, all wild beasts. You shall crawl on your belly and eat dust every day of your life. I will make you enemies of each other, you and the woman, your offspring and her offspring. Now, it will crush your head and you will crush, uh, you will strike at its heel, its it depends on the translation, where it comes from. If it, if it's it, or he or she, see, 
either he, it will crush your head, or he will crush your head, or she will crush your head, who will, the, 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 what he's giving, will, will have this capacity to do this. In Hebrew, it's, it's, um, it's the devil. It's it, see, there's no gender, that's the word, the genderless word for uh, it will crush your head in Hebrew. And the, the Latin has, uh, what do you suppose? The Latin has she, <laughs> the blessed mother. <laughs> see, she will crush your head, the head of the demon, and you will strike his head. And the Hebrew um, and said, uh, there's also uh, he, she, or, or it, anyway, depending. I covered all three of those, I think. She, uh, so, so this is uh, um, the um, Vulgate Bible has, um, has uh, she. You know what the Vulgate is? Um, mm, excursus. <laughs> well, let's uh, there's not much time anyway, so I'll take I'll take time now just to tell you what the Vulgate Bible is. The the um, Bible existed in um, uh, Greek and and uh, it was written in Hebrew and Greek, and the, those were the two uh, two languages of the Bible until. Uh, um, the time of, of St. Jerome, what was happening was Pope Decius uh, was finding that, that people were, that the Latin was uh, creeping into the, uh, as it was creeping into the liturgy, as, see, as, as, as the Roman Empire's language uh, was Greek and it, it evolved into Latin. And it was at this time it was evolving into uh, into the mass as well into the prayers, and so uh, as that happened, as it as it became uh, evident that something had to be done because the prayers were using street Latin and nothing nothing <laughs> nothing good about about the language, and so Pope Pope Decius said. Uh, asked his secretary, uh, Jerome, St. Jerome, to produce a Latin version because the Roman Empire was becoming Latin. So um, Jerome did. He produced what became known as the Latin Vulgate. Uh, and it's a translation of the, of the Greek and, and uh, Hebrew um, Bibles in, into, a, into a Latin version. Most Catholic Bibles are a translation from the Vulgate, see, from the Latin. So you're like three languages away from the original. <laughs> Better to go back to the Hebrew and, <laughs> and the Greek. But most Catholic Bibles are, are translated, trans, we'll say, translated from the Vulgate by, you know, it's a Latin Bible. We thought for a long time that Latin would always be the language of the church. So at any rate, um, so so in in this you have this etiology. D d despite who's going to crush the serpent's head, if it's he, she, or it, it means something different, and, and you'll find those in the, in the different versions of the Bible. Um, you can't get to the original. People say, well, why don't you check the original? The, 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 <laughs> the original texts are, are all decayed by... <laughs> they, they, were they were copied and translated and changed and copied and translated and changed so that, uh, you know, the originals are... Uh, <laughs> one of my students once said, he liked the... Uh, um, King James Version, because if it was good enough for St. Peter, it's good enough for me. <laughs> I'm still laughing about that one. More etiologies. I will multiply your pains in childbearing. See, how come childbearing is so painful? See, here's the etiology. It says so right here. You shall give birth to your 
your child, children in pain. Your yearning shall be for your husband, yet he will lord it over you. Now, those are the, the, the uh, uh, curses. Um, and then there are some specific ones for the, for the man. To the man, he said, because you listened to the voice of your wife and ate from the tree of which I forbade you to eat. I say, you hear that, gentlemen? Don't listen to your wife. <laughs> Accursed be the soil because of you. With suffering shall you get your food from it. This is um, either anti-agrarian or it could be just that, that agriculture was very difficult and not productive in the beginning time of it. So that's, that's probably what was going on here. With suffering shall you get your food from it every day of your life. It shall yield you brambles and thistles, <clears throat> and you shall eat. Um, I have to stop because of time. I'd like to finish that paragraph and show you, but I'll pick that up next time, okay? Thank you for coming. <laughs> Come back. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.